Well, we got to get some guys healthy. You know, the good thing is it's pretty much through our team right now. We had a, a week-long battle with this, uh, some virus stuff. Uh, the good thing is it's less than 24-hour uh, bug. So our Jeff Hireman's it seems to be the last casualty that uh, we're working through that. Other than that, it's been a great trip. Uh, practice facility at Nova's been fantastic. The Orange Bowl people have been great. And uh, <laughs> just got to get ready for a great team. All right, Coach, I'm going to move it. All right, we'll now open it up. We've got two microphones roaming in the room. You could raise your hand, uh, give us your name and your affiliation, and we'll get started. Here in the front row, all the way to the left. Urban Bill Bishop, 10 TV in Columbus. How do you view bowl games, you, especially these ones that aren't for national titles and these type of things? Is, do you view it as a continuation of the 2013 season or as a way to start 2014 or maybe a combination of both? I'm going to give you a little disappointing probably answer because I don't really think it that much through. It's a, a chance to go compete, whether it's checkers, ping pong, whether it's we're, we're going to go try to win a game. And our objective every time to keep score is go win. And that's the mentality we try to create within our program. And uh, whether it's the Orange Bowl, whether it's the eighth game of the season, you know, um, the, you know, we're trying to win that game. So I, early in bowl practice, we gave a lot of uh, work with the young players and even you know the plus periods after practice. But the last ten days have all been about trying to compete to win a game. Next question. We'll go all, standing up all the way to the right. Rebecca, right next to you. Hey, Urban Tim Reynolds of the AP in Miami. Do you ever spend any time, I'm guessing the answer to this is no, but I'm going to ask anyway. Do you ever spend any time contemplating your own legacy? I mean, you have a chance to win a fifth BCS game, third different school. Those things don't happen, you know, to, to normal people, obviously. Do you ever spend any time thinking about what your legacy on this game is going to be? No, I, you know, I took a year off of coaching, and it came up a few times, and you have time actually to, to think back. Uh, I always think back of the legacy. You know, we've had a bunch of the former players come out to practice yesterday. Uh, a bunch of guys we've coached in the past and uh, all the way back from Notre Dame days. That's, you know, at some point, my, the thing I love most about coaching football, what I miss the most, is the relationship with the players. And that, that's, you know, because you, you can't really control what's, what's out there. Uh, our guys work hard. We, try, we, we don't try. We do it the right way. Uh, I have a bunch of coaches that are coaching. Our head coach is now and doing great. Uh, following the rules, doing things the right way, what's good for college football. That's, if you had to say, what, a, what am I most proud of is the players and then the fact that our coaches are out there doing so many good things. All right, we'll go on the left side, about three rows back in the middle. Dave Briggs, Toledo Blade. Urban, how important is I mean, this game maybe for the perception of the program? I mean, Michigan State won yesterday, and now I, I guess how much, how important is it for the perception of you guys and the Big Ten? And I know it's crazy to look ahead to next year, but like a big win over an out-of-conference team, maybe it'll strengthen the case of a one-loss team. I, that's I, looking ahead. But. That's a great question. I, I think it is big. I, it's something that we don't, that doesn't occupy much of our time. You know, you know, we have to stop bubble screens, Sammy Watkins, and those type of things. But uh, I did see the end of the Rose Bowl. And I found myself pulling for the team in green real hard, just because you know it, it, when I sit in these kind of environments, it just gets thrown at you. Know, uh, back and forth. What about this? What about this? And I, you know, I can't. We can't control what's out there. But uh, anytime you know a member of your conference uh, does well in a big game like that, I, I, th I do think that's important because the truth is the upper level Big Ten teams are excellent football teams, and. Uh, uh, the conference is getting better. Guys are working extremely hard to uh, close the gap on, on, on the SEC. That's the one conference the last few years that has really dominated. So uh, that's a topic of conversation quite often. It's, once again, it doesn't occupy because you can't control that. You can control on performance, uh, was it Saturday or Friday? I guess Friday's game. And we're going to the front row all the way to the right. Hi, Urban. Good to see you. And Craig Barnes, uh, on the tail of what the gentleman just asked you about the conference, do you think with the evolution of the playoff system that more of this conference talk will fade away? It's going to be every man for himself, basically, because it's going to be every team trying to get to get to that final four. It's not going to be a conference trying to get to that final four. I think that's a good point. You know, it's something, once again, you just uh, in the offseason. I, I'm, I'm, when the BCS first went with the game removed, and it was actually uh, Ohio State versus Florida in 06, it was all, how are we going to do this? And, and just the logistics of one week behind, and and uh, and I think the the one thing on most coaches' minds is 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 how is the logistics going to work as far as you have two games back to back with finals with 
there's an element that I don't hear much conversation about when you start talking about the playoffs, and that's the academic calendar and the wear and tear on your 85 scholarship players, which we operate, we're, we're much below that because of the NCAA stuff. But that's that's the we're we're we're, we're, we're dealing with some injury and depth issues right now. If you had to play one more after this, I'm just you know those are the things that are, I know that's in this coach and staff's mind. I don't think that's things the public think about. The coaches think about what you're talking no, about: injuries, public, academic. Yeah. You got to f- figure all that into this, into the. Well, most kids somewhere. start. Here's the thing to think about: most kids start class Monday, and then take another week off or ten days off. I just think those. I'm, I'm nowhere probably going a direction away from the Orange Bowl, but that's that's real, and I think that's. I think most coaches are anxious to see. How is that going to affect college, you know, the student athlete? <coughs> we'll go over here on the left on the second row. Yeah, Urban, you, you, you've had like a month now to uh, sort of shuffle around the defense a little bit. You're dealing with an injury or a situation with Noah Spence where he's not going to be here. But what do you expect out of that group on Friday night? Uh, uh, do you expect an inspired performance? Just what's your take on uh, what, what's coming? Uh, we've practiced really hard. A pass defense has been a, a major issue at Ohio State, not anywhere near the standard that we expect. Uh, we, when, whenever that happens, you look at personnel, you look at scheme. That's both been evaluated. Uh, and then at this time of year, it's just go work as hard as you can. And so we, had, we have Tyvis Powell and Von Bell will be starting at positions they've never started before at. And uh, the, so that was the personnel. We've uh, made some adjustments to scheme. And then we do what we do. And that's go out and work as hard as you possibly can. So I'm expecting, uh, the, you know, the issue is going to be the team you're playing. And uh, they're very good at what they do. And it's not just uh, covering, but it's getting them on the ground because they're, they're the skilled positions at Clemson are as good as anybody in America. So I'm anticipating that our guys play very hard. I'll go over here on your right in the second row. Yeah, Coach, Steve Hellwagon with 24-7 Sports. A uh, question I have. Uh, down the stretch, Braxton uh, was maybe not as efficient throwing the football, perhaps as you would have liked. He only averaged about 130 yards a game. I don't know if you've put a number on what you want to throw for in this game, but that's probably not going to be enough to get the job done. Just what have you done with him, working with him to bring him along so that you guys can make the plays you need to make in this game? Well, Braxton's got to play better, but uh, the guys around him must play better too. And, you know, we, we, the coaches have to do. Everybody, it's, it's a team effort, and I think everybody understands that. Uh, you look, if you closely evaluate those last few games, you know, one with the two were weather conditions. One was a game where we just didn't throw the ball very much because the run game was working so well, and we had to go win the game, obviously. Uh, the last game was one that we have to play better, but, you know, that, that's, that's not just, you can't throw. Uh, I always try to deflect the praise and deflect blame, especially on the quarterback position, because that's a, you know, one of the most, if not the most unique position of all the sport. It's completely dependent upon those around you. And uh, so we've just been, you know, you're going to get tired of us. Just go out and work your tail off and get better. And, you know, our receivers had a pretty good week of practice, too. Back over on your left in the second row. Joe Rubino with Columbus Dispatch. How important is the outcome of tomorrow's game in determining just how successful this season should be viewed? If you, if you win, the season is blank. If you lose, the season is blank. Oh, I think it's any time you're in a bowl game, that's, that's – uh, I guess uh, the gentleman asked about, is it part of the last season, this next season, or whatever? It's, all, it's part of this season. So what are we? We're 12 and 1. You know, 12 and 2 is a lot different than 13 and 1. And uh, winning a BCS bowl game so is very important. Right down here in the front row on your right. Urban, Todd Porter from the Canton Repository. This is uh, today will be your last day walk through with this group. Uh, what will be your message to them? And, and you know, ha- have you sort of thought about what you'll tell them? You know, today being the last time you guys will gather as you know, practice and walk through whatnot. Yeah, we uh, we've had conversation. You know, I, I love this group. Uh, this group, um, you know, I think you guys know me well enough that I'm very honest about evaluation of people, and, and sometimes to the point where it's sometimes too honest or too forthright. I love these guys. These guys, uh, our leadership was very poor after last year in January and February. Uh, we went on a, about an eight-month class to teach leadership and to present situations for them where they had to respond and you know the whole event plus the response equals the outcome and uh, they've done a really good job I mean the Philly Browns of the world are different human beings and and I'm anxious to see guys like that go on in their life because of what they've learned and the way they've uh, responded so uh, I have great admiration for these players uh, and they've earned that right now now they got to finish strong but uh, 
I, th I think the Buckeye Nation knows exactly the way the staff feels about this group of players, especially the ones walking out the door. All right, we're going to your left, kind of in the middle of the section. Urban Doug Maurice, Cleveland.com. Over here. Uh, just kind of a procedural question. Did you guys name like permanent captains then, end of the year at the banquet or anything? Or Not sure yet. Okay. You know, I, 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 it was kind of a unique situation where, you know, there's just a group of players. And I, Mike Vrabel said it best to me, and he's the one that he said, you know, I wasn't elected captain, but he looked at me and goes, I was captain. And so I'm thinking, he should have been a captain. You know, I'm to limit it to three to four. So um, I still haven't decided yet. Obviously, some have performed better than others, but. Uh, Jordan Hall is a great example. You know, Jordan Hall is a guy that was our leading rusher first three games of the year. Went through a chronic, a bad knee uh, uh, issue that he's playing better. He had one of his best practices yesterday. And that, you know, I go back to what Mike Vrabel said. Well, I'm captain. I'm not, it doesn't matter. You're a leader. So I haven't, we haven't decided that yet. And then in your history as a coach, have you ever had times when players, whether they're seniors or juniors who are thinking about maybe going pro, that they're there is any distraction about sure. thinking ahead to combine stuff, workouts, and how do you handle that as Have a coach? Have we ever had it? Just Hundreds of times. What, what do you do as a coach to try to keep those guys thinking about the bowl while they're also thinking about their future? Well, every one of you know, we can say that it's, uh, um, that doesn't exist, but that's a flat lie. Every, every player comes to Ohio State, every player, with a dream of playing in the National Football League. That's a fact. Uh, we don't hide from that fact. Our players should. If you do a good job recruiting, coaching, developing, an Ohio State football player should play in the NFL. Now, what round, that's all up to how blessed the individual is. But that's, um, if I see it, if I hear it, I have enough, you know, I've done this long enough that I've had to have conversations with people. And uh, I haven't felt that on this group at all. You know, I've had a couple conversations, many, about, hey, we'll discuss this afterwards. Let's go win this game. And, and uh, I give credit to these players. But to think that doesn't exist in college football, I'd probably say 99% of every senior or junior, that's, I mean, that's starting, is someone's having that conversation with him. And I hope that the, we reached the point last year. We were probably at that point near the end of the season. We certainly weren't with the relationship because we only knew those kids for a year. But I feel like, uh, you know, those – I know these players well enough, and so are our coaches, to have any conversations if I see it disrupting a practice. But I, to answer your question, I, I've seen that many, many, many times where it disrupts practice. We're going to go on the inside aisle about four rows back. Hey, Coach Aaron Brenner from the Post and Courier in Charleston. Turnover margin is a huge figure in football, but points off turnovers maybe gets a little overlooked. How do you, how do you approach coaching your guys on responding immediately after a turnover? Just what you said, coaching, having that discussion that, uh, you know, I, and really I go back to the event pl uh, plus response equals the outcome. How do you respond? A turnover to us is an event. And it's, it's uh, you know, I go all the way back to how, how do they respond to those off-season drills, which are pretty infamous around Ohio State, how hard they are. And that teaches them for those difficult situations you get thrust into. It's not, hey, hey, by the way, we have a turnover here. Let's go out and play hard. That, that starts a long time ago. So that's really what our whole program is built on, is training them how to respond to adverse uh, events that take place. Hey, Brian. We'll go actually right here, uh, third row on the inside aisle. Hi. Brian Benham with ESPN.com. Urban, uh, Ryan Shazier is playing really close to home and uh, maybe possibly his final game for you guys. What has he meant for your team this year? And does his role as a leader grow any without uh, Roby and Spence in there? Well, the guy that uh, the guy that his name and I, I it's a good opportunity for me to bring his name up is Christian Bryant. Was probably our best football player on both sides of the ball, and we lost him and his leadership skill. Uh, last year's game at Penn State was when I really because when you're at home, you know the crowd supplies a lot of leadership, and, and you're at home. When you go on the road and play in that kind of environment like we did, I saw something I never knew was inside at Christian Bryant. That was, he took over that locker room, took over the team, and as a result, we had a heck of a game. I give him a lot of credit for that. So he became our, 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 our leader. And when he went down, Ryan Shazir assumed a lot of that responsibility, including taking his number, and has done a really magical job with that. See, he was not a, a leader a year ago. He was a very good player. By the end of the year, a great player. I, uh, he's been a very good player this year, but he's he's done a nice job leading, leading by example, practicing hard, and and even being more vocal. That assumes some of the Christian Bryant responsibility. I'll go on the front row to your left, Urban. When Dabo was in here, he talked about Florida and specifically South Florida being part of their recruiting footprint. 
Obviously, you're very familiar with the amount of talent in this state uh, from your time at UF. Um, what has it meant to have the Ohio State brand here for this week? Uh, you guys have had some successes here as well. And then how do you go about attacking this talent-rich state in recruiting and making sure that you can pluck some guys? Oh, well, you can probably see in the last few weeks, we hit it real hard. And, and uh, Joey Bosa, we're going to go to St. Thomas tonight. You know, I've known their coaching staff forever. Uh, you know, if not the best high school in America, one of the top high schools in America, I can list at least two dozen high schools right in this area that are loaded with talent. Um, that we have great, not good relationship, great relationships with the high school coaches. Uh, a lot of them came to visit us at a bowl practice. So, um, Ohio State's, a pro you know, not surprisingly, because it's a national brand, has had very good success in Florida recruiting. You know, Ryan Shazier and, and uh, Sabino was from down here. And so, um, uh, we attack it. It is, I don't consider it a non primary, it's a primary area for us. And because we have so much experience down here, it's nothing new. I mean, we know most of these coaches. And, and the good thing is Ohio State, people know Ohio State. Hey, Brian, can you bring the microphone right down here? And, Coach, we're going to go standing up in the back of the room at the cameras. Coach Mark Dofer, WYFF in Greenville, South Carolina. I'm curious how much, before the, the, the bowl games were set, how much had you seen of Clemson, and, and what were your impressions? Well, Clemson and Ohio State have great relationships. Their coaching staffs with Chad and with Tom Herman. Uh, are all, the two offense coordinators are – are pretty close. Uh, Dabo and I have become very close the last five years, and so there's a great relationship. We actually studied together in the offseason offensive football, very, share very similar approaches to the game and a mutual respect. Uh, so it's, it's, this is a, no, I mean, we're going to go as hard as we possibly can to try to beat each other, but this is a, this is a game of mutual respect. So I, I've seen, we actually have some cut-ups of them during the season that we'd watch and, and are real, impressive with, real impressed with some of the things they do. And on your right in the front row. Good morning, Coach Clay Hall, ABC6 in Columbus. What's your uh, comfort level with a couple of guys who will step in for Spence, Jamal Marcus? Uh, Jamal team? Marcus is going to be a disruptive guy. He's one of the more talented guys on our, on our team. Um, you know, I'm anxious to watch him play. We had a staff meeting this morning at 7 a.m., and Mike Vrabel made that comment to me. He says he's, he's going you know, he, to be – he's a quick twitch guy. This is his kind of game and a very talented guy, so we're anxious to see him go. Right, we're going to go all the way to the right, about four rows back. Coach uh, Zach Ellis from SI.com. How have you approached coming off a loss with your players going to this game a little bit differently, something they haven't really dealt with this year? I, we evaluated that. You know, I think uh, we had uh, the worst part was probably the four days after. You know, all the coaches, uh, I think three fourths of our staff left from Indianapolis and went out recruiting. Uh, myself, I went back and then went out recruiting. We came back and and the feeling in you, in, inside of you the whole three days, you know, you had to go walk in and smile. At the, and it was the most phony smile you've probably ever seen. And then you get back and you see the players you care about and see the pain on their face. And, and uh, we had a real emotional meeting. I don't know if emotional is the right word, but just a, you know, like you would with any type of family members that are going through a hard time. And from that point forward, they've been fine. And obviously the Orange Bowl had a lot to do with that. This is, the, the, if not the premier, one of the most premier bowl games in all of college football. So uh, it, it's been fine. I mean, we're over it and we got to move forward. And on the inside aisle, row two. Yeah, Coach, uh, you mentioned Bryant, in your mind, may have been the best player you had on either side of the ball. Can you go inside where he's at right now? And obviously, if he's the best player you have on both sides of the ball, you'd love to have him back. Has he expressed a desire to come back? And where is that at right now? Oh, yeah. yeah. Bryant, Christian Bryant, uh, I believe the appeal was denied. I'm not sure if there's another one to come back for another year. Um, and uh, he won't be able to play in this game. You know, we, there was a little bit of outside hope to get him ready, but, you know, the injury that he had was pretty severe. So I'm not sure if there's another appeal process left. Uh, appeals haven't been real good to the Buckeyes here lately, so we'll see. Can they give a reason for the dialogue? Just, I think it's just it's sheer numbers. Okay. Are we going to stand up in the back of the room again? Coach Derek Phillips, Fox in Columbia, South Carolina. With you guys being so close to a uh, to play, possibly playing for a national title, is it is it hard for your guys to kind of get up for just a, a BCS bowl game against a Clemson team? I don't believe so. If it was a, a against a, a opponent that maybe didn't have the flash and the talent that uh, Clemson has, that's a that's a very good question and it's true. You know, I've, we've dealt with that before. You know, at the Sugar Bowl and. Uh, when I was in Florida, we, we uh, just missed on playing for national championship, lost the title game, 
and they came back, responded very well, once again because of the quality of bowl. Uh, I, I credit that to the Sugar Bowl. And so our players understand that this is, and the way they're treated, that this is, this is big time football. So I don't feel that, and obviously the, the final results will be tomorrow night. Next question for Coach Meyer. Rick Henry, WIS TV, Columbia, South Carolina. Both you and Dabo this morning have talked about the national brand of your programs. In your opinion, what does it take to establish a program as one of those teams with a national brand and just the pressure of living up to those expectations? I'm sorry, what, what's it going to take to establish a national brand? Yeah, what, uh, to, to have a program that says, okay, we have this national brand, um, what, what does it take to establish your, yourself as one of those teams with a national brand and just the pressures of living up to those expectations? Well, I, I think there's, there's a few programs that, that's been established and that Ohio State's one of them. You know, I think this is, uh, uh, we went out and played on the West Coast and half the stadium was scarlet and gray. You know, the alumni base at a place like Ohio State, it is a national brand and, and we certainly can't take credit for that. That's been going on for over 100 years. Um, the second part's intriguing. Um, the, the second part of the question is that how do you live up to expectations? And and that's probably, I don't know if you ever do. I've been down that road before. You know, you go 24 or 25 and what happened? You know, I, we get that, but that's that's our choice to go coach at Ohio State and come play at Ohio State. You know, if you're not a first round draft pick, what happened to that kid? I don't know. I mean, he just, is, it, it happens. It's called football, it's called uh, athletics. So uh, we all sign up for it. There's no one. Um, making us, you know, when I talk about us, our assistant coaches and our group of players, they chose a place like Ohio State, like uh, people chose Clemson. I mean, there's high expectations every, at, at places like that. You embrace it and you go move forward. I'll go on the front row on your right. Urban, uh, recruiting related question. Uh, when you offer a young kid, how important is it to monitor that kid in, in, in terms of his behavior and how he's progressing? In, I mean, is that something you guys play, pay pretty close attention to? I'd say in the last decade, probably, uh, I, I'd give it a three or four, because it just, you know, the social media, when I first started recruiting 20 years ago, you didn't have, you know, you didn't know much. You know everything now. Uh, I have people full-time jobs. That's what they do is monitor Facebooks and Twitters and tweets and all that stuff, because we have to find out what's, you know, I, I want to know, because we're held responsible for all those guys. And, and uh, so it's taken on. This is an era, generation that, is I'm not sure people I, I guess that's our your jobs too but it's 18 19 20 year olds we know everything that's going on every day because of what goes on on these cell phones think about that for a minute 18 to 19 to 20 year olds so it's a big part of what we do huge right, we're going on your left Brian if you can stand up so coach knows where he's at uh, Jeff Svoboda with uh, Buckeye Sports Bulletin. You've just been asked about kind of motivation coming off a tough loss uh, for this bowl game. And a similar situation, I think, sort of in 2009 where you guys, if you'd won the SEC championship game, would have gone on to the national championship. You still came out and had a pretty good bowl performance that year. Obviously not the same situation, but is there anything you can kind of take from that experience and apply here to, with this team? Sure. We, uh, we, uh, I went back and I, I just looked at all the practice schedules and looked at some. I always keep notes, uh, pretty detailed notes of the approach to the game. Uh, so much of that is personnel based. Actually, Mike Pouncey was with us last night at practice, and I grabbed him and just kind of chatted with him for a minute. And, and the ultimate uh, compliment or the ultimate player is the competitive person. You know, the com I use we use the term competitive spirit. If there's a competitive spirit, then you're going to go play your heart out. And I would anticipate from everything I've seen with this team, uh, the competitive spirit's there. Now it's just, are we good enough to, at certain spots, to go s defeat this team? So I, I, I feel like, uh, you know, I've also had, you know, been in situations where I didn't feel the competitive spirit. And that's when you got to, I always say, the secret T-shirt or the, you know, secret handshake to get guys to play hard. I don't feel that. I go over here on the left in the second row. Urban, a lot of people like us keep, keep keeping up Urban. with the progress of Braxton Miller as a, oh, sorry, as a, uh, as a quarterback, as a full quarterback. Have you seen him take steps even this past month where he will be better than he was uh, the last time people saw him. Absolutely, uh, I have seen it, and uh, it, to me, it's uh, um, he's still got a ways to go to be. Uh, you know, I, I made a comment the first year. I have no idea where his ceiling is, and then middle of the season when he put together, he played very well. 
for a while, uh, and everyone around him did. I started to see what Braxton Miller could become as a quarterback, and I can still see that. It's, he's not there yet, but uh, the ceiling's pretty high, and it's a special place not many guys can go because of his. He's got just incredible ability, quick release, and, and uh, fundamentally, he's when he's on, he's on. So we just need to keep pushing that envelope, and I think the best thing is he sees it too. That uh, where he could be, he's not there yet, but he's getting there. Do you expect it to be a long conversation with him uh, about I don't know. the next step, or do you? You're, 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 you're I've gone away from expect. Who knows? You know, I mean, who knows what's going on? And, and I would, I have a great relationship with Braxton, and and uh, I, I don't know. I'll we'll go over on the left, second row. You had the benefit this year of the 15 bowl practices that you didn't have last year. How? Beneficial has that been, and who are the guys, the young guys, who've really taken advantage of that opportunity? Well, Bill, there, <clears throat> I haven't thought about it. Uh, I'll give you a couple of names. I'm going to leave some guys off, but uh, obviously the Von Bell and Tyvis have been really impressive. Uh, Josh Perry is one of the most improved players on our team. Uh, then you see a guy like Chris Worley and, and uh, um, uh, Jalen Marshall, uh, Corey Smith, Michael Thomas, those are guys that didn't play for us this year. They're going to be significant roles uh, next year for us. So those are just some examples. All right, we're right in the middle of the section here on the left. Urban. Uh, uh, Billy Price is another one that's been outstanding in the last month. I'm sorry. Off topic, uh, Tim Tebow has entered the broadcasting world. He said he talked to you and got some advice. What did you tell him, and do you think his playing days are over? I hope it's not. I, I just I hope his playing days are not over. Um, I think Tim will be excel at anything he does because of his work ethic, his passion for what he does. Tim and I talk frequently. He's like a family member. So um, I just hope he's not done playing. I think a lot of people hope he's not done playing, but um, I hope someone. I don't want to even call it take a chance. I hope someone goes and lets him play a little bit. But uh, my advice to him is just attack it the same way. You know, guys like I, I use Mike Vrabel as an example. Mike Vrabel is a guy that doesn't have to coach. He's attack coaching the same way he attack playing. He's, that's his persona. That's his spirit that, that he has. And Tim's the same way. He's a, he'll attack this just like he is playing a game. Had, did you ever talk to him about Tim joining you at Ohio State in some fashion? Not serious talks. I mean, uh, last spring he came, stayed with me a few days, and, and I, you know, I because I, I don't want to disrupt his dream. You know, his dream is to go play quarterback in the National Football League, and I don't think we're there yet that he's in his mindset that he's done. So, nothing serious. Here in the front row on your right, Urban. You've mentioned a lot about Braxton and guys around him having to play well. The one guy you haven't talked a whole lot about is Devin Smith. Uh, how has Devin played the last three, four weeks of the season, and, and has he really? maybe not reach that consistency that you would like to see from him? I think you'd mentioned that earlier in the year. You wanted to see more of a consistency from him. Well, Devin is one of the most talented guys I've had at, at wide receiver. And you think against our rivals, he, he made a great play. Uh, he's had some uh, performances this year that are outstanding. The consistency is probably the term that's most appropriate with him. Um, and just consistency all the way through, because he's a, a great kid. and. Uh, just incredibly talented, but he's got it's got to be day one, day two, day three, and it's a consistency. Uh, but I don't, I, I wouldn't say that he's not performed well. Um, but uh, he's he's a guy that uh, has not maximized as a football player yet. 